Making waffles again. I hope these ones taste better than last time. Oh, that's freaking hot. Check a bite. Oh, that's terrible. What, how did I, what a bitter disappointment these turned out to be. And you know, I expected them to be so good. You know who would appreciate this? Bab. Bab would appreciate me telling him about these terrible waffles. Wood? Is that you? <laughs> hey man, get what? My waffles taste terrible this time. You know when you expect something to taste really good, but it ends up being like kind of bad and stuff? But I blocked your number after you kept sending me those gross pictures of your... Wait a second. You're saying that those waffles taste awful this time? <laughs> you silly goose. You don't remember last time we collabed? You know, the Pokemon Waffle Lion. I was eating waffles. I was all like, you're not me. <laughs> How'd you forget that, you silly goose? Oh god, last time we collaborated? Wait, you're not filming this right now, are you? Ah, raspberries. So I figure if you take half the video, I'll take the other half the video. We'll be done in an hour. Yeah, you know what, that's fine. I was bored anyway. Cool, cool. <laughs> God would, would just relax? Oh, come on, Bob. You've seen one, you've seen them all. So it is that time of year where sleigh bells are ringing, eggnogs are pouring, and New Year's resolutions are creeping on up on us, and we're already planning on ignoring. That's right, it's the holiday season. And usually about now, people like to be positive, you know, holiday spirits and all of that. And as a gaming channel, it makes a lot of sense to take a look back at the entire year and celebrate the things that I loved or we loved the most. Our favorite video games and experiences. Um, however, Bob already stole that idea for his channel in a video that I decided I would hijack and be in the entire thing. So, you know, I didn't, didn't want to make Bob repeat himself. I didn't want to repeat myself. So instead, uh, we're going to do the opposite of that and talk about the things that disappointed us. It's not exactly a super cheery way to end the year. So we're going to keep this video as fun, positive, and light as possible. Or at least I am. Bob's kind of cutthroat. I don't know what he's going to say. Yes, sir. Starting with, of course. Oh, oh, thanks so much, Bob. What? dainty hands you have. Super Mario Maker 2. Despite how much I really enjoyed this game, and I know Bob enjoys it because I am convinced the only two games he owns are Mario Maker 2 and Smash Brothers, because every time I check my online friends, he's playing one or the other. I mean, this man has a Mario Maker problem. I did see a lot of people upset that there wasn't enough options when it came to making in Mario Maker, but... For me, I was already fairly overwhelmed by what there was. I couldn't really get stuck into the first Mario Maker. It did feel a tiny bit restricting, but this one, I just felt so much freedom and the ability to create whatever my brain could think of. But there was one area where this game was severely lacking, and it was the area that I was arguably most excited for. The online. In fact, you know what? I'm not even going to get into it because I'm sure Bob has more than enough to say. Here, take your stupid game back. Oh god, well there's so much that I loved about Super Mario Maker 2, but I couldn't help but be disappointed by some of it. The biggest elephant in the room is the online multiplayer. While I love the multiplayer game modes, it's unfortunate that it only works about three quarters of the time, the game just turns into a slideshow. It's very unfortunate. Nintendo just isn't good at their internet protocol. And there's a lot of little tiny things, like you can't unboo a level. If you accidentally thumbs down a level, that's it. It just thumbs down forever. Also, I wish we still had the 100 Mario challenge. The endless challenge is fine, but it's like chasing a hot dog on a treadmill. You know, you don't know have to talk about wood, right? 911. What is your emergency? All right, so we get a lot of ports of games that find their way to the Switch as well as other systems, and sometimes they can be extremely impressive. Games like Alien Isolation, or even just the fact that Witcher 3 somehow managed to cram its way onto the portable system. But every now and then we get one of those ports that just couldn't pull it off, and Bloodstained was one of those. And I think the thing that made Bloodstained so particularly disappointing was that it's a game that lends itself so well to being on the system. It suffered from terrible frame rate issues as well as just overall muddy visuals, severely poorly optimized. And the biggest issue that so many of us had wasn't so much the frame rate or the visuals. A lot of us can look past stuff like that. 
It was the input lag. In a game like Bloodstain, where pixel perfect combat is the key to victory, having to deal with input lag between the controller and the action the character makes on the screen, it made the game for a lot of us fairly insufferable to try and play. But hey, the game itself is incredible and I was really happy with it. I went out and bought it on Xbox and played through it there instead. It's just sadly the Switch version is just disappointing enough that it makes you want to go out and buy it somewhere else instead. So Damon X Machina is a mech game that a lot of mech enthusiasts love. Yeah, that's right, there are mech enthusiasts. Mech games are notoriously very difficult and I guess simulator-ish? There's a lot to them, there's a lot of upgrades you can have for your mech, and that's a lot of people's defense for Damon X Machina. If it doesn't feel right to play, you gotta change your loadout on your mech. But when will I get to the point where the game feels like it's good to play? because it's not, it's very bad. <laughs> they released a free demo back in, I think, February, and it did not feel good. It was a mess. They solicited feedback from that demo. To their credit, fixed a lot, and it turned into a much better game. It's just that it's still not that great of a game, and the dialogue and the story, nobody's here for any of that. It's got a cool rock soundtrack, though. Give you points for that. If you love mech games, this is probably something that you might like or at least suffer through because you like mech games. I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm your little Christmas elf. Uh, can anyone tell me why I'm doing this again? I don't want to do this again. <laughs> I think I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the Pokemon games. And not for my benefit, believe me, I've said everything I already wanted to say within my videos. What I feel like disappointed most people this year when it came to the Pokemon games. The Pokedex being clicked in half Thanos style, reused assets and general laziness from Game Freak. Now, I don't 100% share all of those emotions and sentiments. The snapped Pokedex wasn't really an issue for me personally. Game Freak decided to cut the Pokedex in half because they said they were working from the ground up to recreate all the Pokemon models and that ended up being proven as a complete lie. The only new animations I could find in the game were the Pokemon walking around the overworld because they all had their own unique animations for that which I actually found to be pretty cool. And then the Poke Camp, which the Poke Camp I could give two Poke craps about, but every Pokemon at the Poke Camp had their own unique animations for again, walking around or interacting with you and slapping balls around. I would rather the attacks look flashy, but I mean, that's cool too. And I think overall, if we could just take all the issues everyone had with the new Pokemon game and just kind of smish smash it into one overarching point, I think what it really comes down to is these Pokemon games being the first big Pokemon games we've had released on a Nintendo home console, that console being the Switch, I think we all wanted just a lot more than what Game Freak has been giving us over the last, I don't know how many years at this point, on the handheld consoles. But Sword and Shield ended up feeling like the handheld games with a fresh coat of paint and a little bit a little bit of innovation like in the wild area. But the linear progression, the predictable story, and the played out formula, eh, I mean, I haven't even played that many Pokemon games and I feel like I've done this a thousand times. Having said that, I put in over a hundred hours into Pokemon Sword and I had a lot of fun with at least half of that. The last half, I had a lot of fun with those hours. All right, all right, yeah, Yoshi's Crafted World. I got, let me tell you something. If I don't like a game, I'm not playing more than like three hours of it. So I didn't play much of Yoshi's Crafted World. It's an all right game. I was really hoping for a lot more from a Yoshi game, something a little more akin to Yoshi's Island, one of the best games on the Super Nintendo. Instead, we get this really super kid-friendly, cutesy Yoshi game that is way too easy. I know this sounds ridiculous because this game is for very tiny children and I am a grown yes. man. I'm sure if you have some nieces or nephews or even kids who are very small, maybe under the age of eight, they'll have a great time with Yoshi's Crafted World. I have hair on my chest and many other places. So Yoshi's Crafted World is just not something that I wanted any part of. All right, I think we've had enough with games. How about, would you try a little bit of this for yourself, you know? Why do you keep doing this? It's freaking me out, man. Uh, the Switch Lite, yeah, I don't know why he... Oh, the cross saves. Yeah, that wasn't a thing. So the big question when this beautiful bad boy was announced and eventually released was, 
is it going to have cross saves? And what we all meant by that, or at least what I meant by that, and what I was getting really excited for and even talked about in my videos a bunch, and I was hyping up the concept and idea of a real-time and active cross-save system, where as soon as you make an action on your profile on any of your family of Nintendo Switch consoles, it updates, it saves to the cloud, and then as soon as you log into your profile on another console, another system, the Switch will automatically just receive that information, and if you put in the same game, Game you were just playing somewhere else you could easily just switch between your saves it would have not only made so much sense but it would have made the switch Lite a practical system to have to own for people who already have a nintendo switch however that didn't exactly play out a hundred percent it does have cross save capabilities not every game, but I believe most games, at least Nintendo's games, other than Splatoon for some reason, it's weird. They will allow you to cross-save, however, it, it, it's kind of clunky. It's possible for some games, but it's not as easy as pick up and go. I'm a busy man! I got things to do! I can't be sitting around googling what games have cross-save and then trying to- Ah, man, screw, screw that noise. Yep. And that was that whole thing. As a result of having no good way to really practically do cross saves, I haven't even turned this thing on since I finished Link's Awakening. I mean, this one isn't mine. It's Bob's. He gave it to me. And I'm just going to go ahead and keep it. And as a thank you present, I guess I'll give him one of my switches. Gosh knows I have too many of them. Thank you very much. All right, I guess we're talking about more Switch Online stuff. I'm happy that we get NES and SNES games for free with Switch Online. They were also adding two or three NES games to that library every single month, which was awesome. But they started to get crappier and crappier. It was clear the well was running dry for NES games. I understand they couldn't use a lot of licenses in some games, like the Mega Man collection is already on the Switch, so we're not going to see that for free on NES Online. And then eventually they just stopped releasing NES Online games entirely. Fortunately... That was because they released the Super Nintendo games, which has a very good library. They didn't keep up with the same amount of updates for the Super Nintendo games as they did with the NES games. In fact, they stopped updating both of them at the same time. But this month, we got a pretty big push of Super Nintendo and NES games added to both of those libraries. So Nintendo kind of held back, but made up for it in the end. I guess. I think it's going to be another few months until we get another update again, and I don't think they can top having Star Fox 2 as part of the library. I just hope next year maybe we get some Game Boy games, maybe a Game Boy Classic would be awesome. It's a real stretch to want some N64 games. That would be amazing, but I highly doubt they would do that. Oh, I swear on Ring Fit Adventure, that is one beautiful man. One sweet Christmas cookie. I don't know if it's the hair, if it's the beard. There's just something about him. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I think it's obvious we had to be very nitpicky because the Switch had a very strong year. I mean, we had to take games that are already fantastic, like Mario Maker, and nitpick on one small little feature that we didn't like. For all intents and purposes, Nintendo has had an extremely strong year. It has been awesome and really not disappointing at all. In fact, it's been so awesome with so many fantastic games that Bobby Boy himself just did a whole video about that. I'm a little, I'm a little... I'm your little Christmas elf. All right, Bobby boy, look, how about we call a truce? I feel like we're already scraping the bottom of the waffle bowl anyway. Yeah, sure. I can't really think of anything else this year that disappointed me anyway, besides your channel. And YouTube AdSense. <laughs> Tell me about it. Too much clickbait, am I right? <laughs> Are you eating more of those waffles? I thought they disappointed you. Yeah, they were disappointing, but I think I flip-flopped and now I'm really addicted to them. Oh, you. <laughs> Go watch my damn video on my channel. Everybody's in it. The whole world's in it, and you should watch it.